Good morning. Welcome to Tara at Home and hope you're having a nice start to your weekend. We're here with Michelle James from uh, from Tara and we're talking about, of course, we're all about color at Tara, right? So we've got all kinds of neat, colorful products in that are useful in your home and uh, beautiful colors. But again, obviously, they, they serve a purpose as well. They totally serve a purpose, mm -hmm. and I love this. My husband doesn't love that I love this because it's more gadgets in the drawer, but <laughs> it, they're great, fun things. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple things here today to show you. You tell me where you want to start. Okay, well, I know that you have the hard-boiled egg here, and uh, we know how good eggs are for us, people who do to, who do eat eggs. Um, they're very, very good for us, and uh, there's so many ways that we can eat them, but you actually have an egg slicer here. So yes. let's talk about this guy. So literally, a simple little thing mm -hmm. as an egg slicer, no different than you'd see kind of restaurant slices. Mm -hmm. This is how they do it, yeah. and it's as simple as... Doop. There you go. And that's, you know, I think is Take great your though. Egg and put it in your salad. These are products that, uh, again, are they actually work. So they're not just pretty. Sometimes you'll see products that are colorful or, you know, have something just, uh, you know, aesthetically they're different, but they're actually not very good. But these are actually good quality products. They're really great quality mm -hmm. products. This company has done a fabulous job with all the colors and all the different types of gadgets and things that they have. Mm -hmm. it's, it is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it brightens up your kitchen too. Yeah, right? it does. Makes and the I cooking say, experience it, fun. It is. It's fun. It's very you can see girls just be all over this stuff, right? <laughs> we just are. We are. Guys are like, we are. Really? I, I love it. Like I said, I got a drawer. It doesn't need any more in it. I but. know, but I already know which ones I'm buying too. <laughs> so I'll just replace it from the plain silver one or white one and put some color. It's funny how we go through stages like that too. Yeah, we do. This, I'm going to add this to our salad next because we're doing our salad. So okay. this is a really fun new gadget. Mm -hmm. It's actually a lemon. Um, spritzer. So okay. you cut the top of your lemon off mm -hmm. and you squeeze this into your lemon and believe it or not and this actually does happen it's going to take me a few sprays mm -hmm. but you start spraying and the oh, lemon juice you can kind of see we see, really didn't comes believe out. that it worked we're like no way come on it does so the package it, like the packaging <laughs> is great and it comes with the lemon one and it actually has a little stand for them as well so when you oh, put really? them in the fridge they're not then leaking cuz they will sort of oh, a liquid love right that. and then there's also the lime That's and you just fantastic. cut off the tiniest little top mm -hmm. And you screw these things in there, and you get all the juice. So now you're getting the purest form of your. It's it's just in its natural form. You don't have to buy those other ones that you know. Exactly. They're sitting in your fridge that don't quite taste like the real juice. This, this is the real juice. This is it. And I love it. Like even just spritzing it on the top of a glass and then pouring your water in it. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to have too much lemon or lime, sure. but it just gives you that little bit of flavor, and That's it's sitting right idea. there in your fridge and ready to go. Very cool. Idea. I know. I, I think love that it. these are an awesome, awesome product. That's a good one. I like the stand idea too that that we have as well. Okay, so what are these guys here? We're looking at these. <laughs> They're trivets. And I don't know about you, <laughs> but when I have a stack of things, it drives me crazy because they take up space. Yeah. Like that would take up space if you had a number of them. Yes. Fold that sucker up and put yeah. it in the drawer. So just a really handy tool to have in the kitchen for a variety of different reasons, right? Exactly. And yeah. you can get things up a little bit higher if you want to. I mean, they don't yeah. have to lie flat. You yeah. can have them up, you know, make a them a little, little bit of a stand. Yeah. Put something on top of them. Okay. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. And again, so obviously we're seeing the color themes here. So we have the hot pink. Hot pink, purple, purple. Um, a chartreuse green, yep. and this cool uh, blue, right? the blue, yes, yeah. the kind of aqua blue. Yeah, so. so you can see that on the cutting boards at the front there, mm -hmm. all the different colors. So you can go for a total theme and get all hot pink, obviously, or you can kind of mix and match with what you like. Absolutely. Kind of a cool gift idea as well, right? So kind of neat for uh, for... Easter and Easter gifts and things like that. It is a neat so. gift idea. This okay. is a really great gift idea if yes. you have kids because it gives you all the pieces for your little ones in this container. Aww. So you've got the whisk and you've got the little silicone cups for muffins. These are so cute. They Look got at their these. own little tools. Oh, I love these. So yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a great little oh, gift idea. And that's idea. a little bunny actually, so it's perfect for an Easter present to give your kids. And you know what? It's really important getting your kids in the kitchen. We talk about that all the time. Uh, it not only, I mean, not only is it just a fun experience, it's a bonding thing, but it's great for kids to learn actual skills. And you can get them, and we both have a wee ones, and getting them in the kitchen and, and as young as like three years old, you can do stuff. And they love stuff. it. They, they do. Make, they love making the mess, but they love seeing the result of yeah, something exactly. too. exactly. And really they're more fun. bound to eat it, so you can like make them eat things that <laughs> they don't make you yes. that interested. Yes, exactly. All right, so what else do we want to show off? All right, well, we've got a little thing, as simple things like the little 
tongs, so you could do your ice cubes with the little tongs. There's a couple different styles of these. You can get the simple ones, but they have nice little grips on them. Oh, yeah. um, there's also ones that have little hands, so they're kind of fun. Uh -huh. um, Cute. I like these too. I've been playing with these, so you know I like these. These, these are, are really great. So, I mean, I don't know. We have a lot of company get-togethers at our house, and mm -hmm. quite often you're pulling out the exact same glass, right? right? So you can just give everyone an option of color. Yeah. Um, I have a whole little ball of, hey. box of them in my house. Um, and it's a little harder because these ones are, the bottom yeah. isn't very clean, See, I, I don't think. There, top, so I there we cool. go. See? So then everyone knows what color they are. <laughs> and these are actually having. plastic as well. So they, they work on plastic. They do. And glass. So these are handy to have because we know we're all familiar with the ones that are the little rings um, that, you know, have the little charms hanging off yes. of them. But I, I really thought these were cute. And I, as you say, they come in so many different types of uh, styles and patterns. So Yeah, there's I think six or seven different styles mm -hmm. of them that you can do. So mm -hmm. you can have different theme parties or whatever that's as well. That's I like that. It, very, does very cute. it does help. Okay, so we also have, um, we have these scrapers. Yeah, these and, scrapers. Uh, we're making pancakes here this morning on Tara. Yes, <laughs> so we've got a colorful whisk. Yes. This is a tool that as soon as this product came in, I got this. Because it drives me crazy when you're trying to get that spatula and you're trying to get the mm -hmm. spatula. Mm -hmm. Whereas is this you're literally taking the scraper mm -hmm. and the whole thing just clears off yeah it really like, does it really is simple that's the thing that they have that perfect enough of uh, the materials firm enough but soft enough to actually achieve some scrapers are too hard so they're they too hard or they're too they're small and they don't actually do what small. you need them to do so right. this is like a two scooper thing and you yes. got it all off the side of your pancake mix awesome so, okay yeah it's a great scraper it really Best is thing, okay well obviously we have this too again where there's so many colors and so many fun things there i'm gonna have to empty all my drawers michelle okay Okay, this is my Love favorite this. product of the Let's season, and we are getting into that season where your kids or even adults want to do popsicles. Yes, but you can make them healthy. You can make them healthy because you can do them yourself. Yes. I, I'm not a fan of store-bought much, so I mm -hmm. really like this because I can do them myself. Yes. So these ones are actually um, plain yogurt and orange juice, and it's literally as simple mm. as mixing it up, pouring it in your mold, and there you go. And it tastes like a creamsicle when you do it that it way. Like a but you can use like fresh fruit and, and, and kind of mullet and then just uh, add some, as you say, juice and adding yogurt. So you're also controlling the sugar. Yes. And uh, and they freeze so quickly. They freeze very very quickly. Mm -hmm. They're really easy to come out. Mm -hmm. There's a different si there's different sizes. You mm -hmm. know, you might have smaller kids that you don't want to have maybe yeah. this big of a popsicle yes, exactly. for. Mm -hmm. um, well, so here's some of the ones at the front. Yeah, there's a couple different small, medium, large sort mm -hmm. of things. I love it when you can even just pop in actually fresh fruit and like watered down lemonade. Mm -hmm. And there you go. You can see the kiwis and the strawberries mm -hmm. and the blueberries inside it's the tripping. popsicles. So. <laughs> mm, I'm going to have one of those. Those are so good. So again, basically all kinds. I mean, and this is, we just brought in just a few of the products. Here's some of the measuring spoons that, yeah, uh, that we there have. There are so like, many. They're silicone based too, right? All, almost everything has a silicone capacity of some mm -hmm. kind okay. to it. So um, whether it be the bottom or like mm -hmm. these are all the silicone, yeah. the the handles, but really, there's the kids stuff. so many options. It's so fun, and again, the cheese knife set, the front there as well. There's, great gift there are a ideas. lot of things. Yeah, great gift ideas, and again, they they're they're fun. Yeah, they're colorful, but they're useful, and that's what's key. So it works out very well for Tara. Thank you so much, for Michelle, for coming back on our show. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, so much color here at Tara right now. Yay, spring! Yay, Easter almost coming as well. We'll be back with more Tara at home. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color. I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Good morning. Welcome back to Tara at Home. I'm here with our local author, Lynn Kittridge-Fox. 
and uh, nice to have you on the show. We we're talking about, uh, you know, we go back a little bit of your background and all these uh, wonderful kids books that you have written along the way, and uh, you have a six-year-old daughter. I do. Right, so um, we do need to hear about uh, Meatball Love and the Spaghetti Tree because uh, this is one story that we have to touch on because this is <laughs> something she helped inspire. She did, and she is on the title of the book, <laughs> and she did help me to inspire um, mm -hmm. my writings because she loves meatballs, and mm -hmm. she used to tell me that she loved me more than six meatballs. <laughs> so because of that, it inspired me. That's pretty me. heavy love. It, that's a lot of love. It is. And on the last page of the book, it's actually mm -hmm. my son's hand holding six meatballs. Oh. So you can show oh, that. So there's so there's my six meatballs full of love. Oh, <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. So this was the first book that I actually had created, but it didn't come out until the, the second book because mm -hmm. my the first one that was mm -hmm. written was The Mighty Moon King right, with right. Tom Wilson. Right. And it was actually the moon in his pictures. And there's another moon in the one here, mm -hmm. which is the sequel that just came out in mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the first one that came about because right. Tom and I collaborated. And I actually paid him to do a painting specifically for the book. Right. And we have now The Mighty Moon King. And again, so, so with that one, you, you took snippets sort of of the painting yes. and it sort of helped illustrate the books. Exactly. Through. What Tom does is he does a sequel of, of paintings or mm -hmm. one painting and I isolated sections of the painting and mm -hmm. put them into pages on the book. Mm -hmm. So if you take note, the eyeballs in his painting come across as almost a road. Mm -hmm. And in this story, there is a road and it's actually the eyeball from the painting. Oh, okay. So we That's really so cool. utilized yeah, like our creativity to do something different mm -hmm. and it's never been done before anything like this. So mm -hmm. we each page is isolated from Tom's paintings and his artwork. So it's That's, well, that's interesting part. So people know, you know, um, from Black and the Rodeo Kings and uh, you know, it, he's just multifaceted that way, but the fact that he's also an artist as well. He's, Absolutely. He really it's it, a lot of people are really, mm -hmm. you know, and his artwork's being really recognized exactly. now. Exactly. Now you're really starting yep. to see this come out. So exactly. again, it's just that artist brain and the way he just won. He just won mm -hmm. um, at the Hamilton Music Awards his mm -hmm. his cover work for right. his Folk Center CD, yeah. which I also did published a book for for him, cool. um, and he won for that. And we have a kid CD coming out, and yeah, he's so done the artwork for that, that. So hopefully so we could win something for that too, maybe. That's amazing. So let's you know what before we kind of move to the CD, let's talk about your your big push for literacy mm -hmm. and for for kids. Really, I, I mean, again, there are some unfortunately some places in the world where kids are not exposed to enough of that's this right. stuff. Like that's kids right. need books. That's that's right. And uh, they need to read. And, uh, you know, that's that's how we become full-blown functioning adults in our world. We yeah. need to read. Literacy so, is so crucial yes, in yes. our in our world today. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, you're really hindered if you aren't aren't reading. Mm -hmm. And um, Telling Tales Festival, which I'm a part of, and uh, hopefully will be again this that's year. That's a they great do, festival. It I took is my son a good there festival. this past year. And it it was, is. It's so good. Yeah, and I've read the last two years there mm -hmm. and really enjoyed that and mm -hmm. felt very honored. And um, we have a really good time there. Mm -hmm. And they really help to promote literacy and I've come on board with them and what I've done because my uh, books have been so successful thank you everyone mm -hmm. um, we've moved forward and we now donate books around the world so Neat. there's books in orphanages in Africa there's books in England I just got a, an uh. email from a Thailand school thanking me for my books think so about how cool they're is that being when you read think about that, all over the world that's really neat. and somebody you know just emailed me and said thank you so much for our books in Thailand uh. so that is just crazy but it gets very very expensive it to would. donate these books hundreds of books mm -hmm. and I have a fabulous you know support team but it did get expensive coming out of my own pocket. But you're also shipping them there as well. That's right. And the it's shipping, the printing mm -hmm. and just the everyday fee of, of what it costs. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we had to do something to keep our costs low because right. we still want to do this donating, paying it forward. It's so important. Yes. So what Tom and I did or what I did was ask Tom if he would be interested in singing on a children's CD okay. and in Tom's very special way he decided to tell me no thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> See that with this we big gruff really, guy. <laughs> <laughs> we really work very well together and have mm -hmm. developed a very lovely friendship and he's a really, mm -hmm. really um, important uh, friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And a couple of months ago he said, I will <laughs> sing on your kid's CD. So he's wow, done something. I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to give up, um, you know, tell mm -hmm. the secret of what it is he's singing, but yeah. I, I got a lot of local artists from Hamilton and also across Canada to donate songs, fifteen right. um, songs. Mm -hmm. So that's being mastered right now. Wow. as we speak and it should be out in the
in the next few weeks, and that will help us to support the payment of paying for the books Great. so we can ship so the books will, and CDs. How will people be able to get that CD? Well, it's then? called A Mighty Tribe, and yes. it, like I said, it's a bunch of, um, of, of wonderful artists and musicians across Canada. They've mm -hmm. all donated their time and efforts, and we will have a launch party for that, but it's also will be available at Coles and Chapters, same place as our books are yes, available. Yes, that's the thing. All these books and are available. Online. Cool. Yeah, that's okay. right. And we do local <clears throat> signings and and um, and and appearances and things like that to celebrate this sort of thing and to let it know to let it be known that we are available mm -hmm. and, and out there to um, for people to purchase the books to, to donate towards literacy well, and I think it almost it helps people it, it inspires them a little bit more to, to purchase these books obviously it's great to have as many books as you can for your children um, but but to also you know that that just giving even children that message that you are helping other children by by having well, these Well, part books. of what Telling Tales is now doing is um, is the Head Start program, so that when you right. go to the doctor's office at I think I believe it's either your four, your 16 month visit or 18 month visit, and mm -hmm. you're actually given a prescription from your doctor with a book that says, you know, please read to your child 15 right. minutes daily. Yes. And it's really such a crucial, important part of it our, is. of our, you know, functioning. Well, that's how they even learn how to enunciate and to speak, like, to speak Absolutely. their words. Absolutely. Like, and they, and you notice when you're reading to little ones, they, they look at you and they, they look do. at your, they do. your mouth and, and it your goes a lot further than just the story. You right. know, it's, it's good for their brain development. It's good for their imagination. It's mm -hmm. good for everything. They're bonding, everything mm -hmm. that, that um, it, it's good for. So the Telling yes. Tales is really great that I way. I love the Telling Tales because of that, because again, it really it, I can see why you would be there because it does really play in with um, again writing a book as well as bringing music into it That's so right. it, it really when you're there it's the whole place Lots is of music just full and of dancing music. Yes. and wiggling and giggling and, yes. and good stuff and you also have a set of postcards that I developed and yes. the reason that I've done that and this is something else that's that's a very inexpensive way to kind of keep in touch with your friends mm -hmm. is through postcards because both mm -hmm. my children last year were going to birthday parties mm -hmm. and they were getting birthday cards with their mm -hmm. friends at addresses in them mm -hmm. and the addresses you know were alongside the words please be my pen pal mm -hmm. and I'm thinking wow there's no pen pals anymore there's email yeah. pen pals. You don't even hear that term. You hardly <laughs> ever do so let's celebrate snail mail mm -hmm. right it's all exciting to go to the mailbox and get a little gift from a friend mm -hmm. so there's six cards in here if we open mm -hmm. them up we could show them mm -hmm. and it, it really it's a really neat way again to stay mm -hmm. in touch yes. through you know snail mail but also using literacy. Well it helps kids write again versus being That's stuck right. on a little, That's uh, right. a little so pad of six some different nature, right? Post cards with little games on the front, mm -hmm. and then you know that your standard postcard spot on the back to mm -hmm. write to your pen pal. Cute. And uh, it's a neat way again, you know, reading, writing, literacy, and another little way that we thought to, to raise some funds so that mm -hmm. we would be able to donate these things around the world to, right. to everybody and celebrate literacy. It's amazing how uh, again from writing your first book and oh, how this is crazy. all just, just in the last three years, it's right. been fabulous, and it's been something that Tom never thought that he would be doing either. Mm -hmm. You know, that, 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 that children's genre no. from Tom Wilson, Who but it's been. Thought. So successful, yes. and he's ha had now two grandchildren. Madeline's had two yes. sons now, mm -hmm. and all the uh, books that him and I have done have come out, you know, alongside awesome. of the births of the kids. It's awesome. So it's just been great. I also work with another local artist named Joan, mm -hmm. and she's the um, illustrator for my book, The D Jungle Valley Jamboree. And well, you know what? We'll have to come. You have to have you back on, and great. we'll talk more yep. because I'm sure you'll have another book out there by then. Probably. <laughs> Lynn Kitcher's Fox, thank you so much, and uh, again, bring literacy and attention to uh, again kids reading. Great. Awesome stuff. Thank, thank, you. thank you. We'll be back Keep with reading. more Tara at home. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara.
Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We are with Chef Fraser McFarland today at Quatrefoil in Dundas. A pleasure to be here. Wonderful Thank restaurant. You. Great food. Thank and you. Uh, it's really a pleasure to have you on our show and to come into your space. And uh, we're going to make a little something special with you today. Yes. Thank you mm -hmm. for coming, first of all. Uh, we're going to do a smoked salmon dish. We've had uh, smoked salmon on the menu pretty much since we've uh, opened the restaurant mm -hmm. and it always changes uh, according to the seasons and stuff so mm -hmm. we're going to do the current dish that's on, on the menu now okay. with, with our smoked salmon. Alright, sounds good. Uh, so the first thing I just want to talk quickly about is our smoked salmon. So we take this uh, and smoke it ourselves. This is uh, organic Irish salmon. That we get into the lovely. restaurant, Wow. Uh, we get it in, we clean it up mm -hmm. and uh, we brine it for 24 hours and then we uh, dry it overnight and then smoke it for about eight hours. My goodness, uh, so that's quite the process. For this recipe, if anyone wants to try some of this at home, they can always use a good quality store-bought salmon. So sure. There's no worries. Skip they, all if the they stuff that the, uh, you guys go through The labor-intensive <laughs> part. So we have to make a uh, pickling liquid because okay. we're going to do it with pickled beets, pickled shallots, uh, a little bit of apple, and mm -hmm. then some cream cheese that we smoked as well. Oh, nice. So it starts with uh, a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little steamy. And this is just a basic pickling liquid. It always changes depending on what we're pickling, but it usually starts off two parts water, one part white wine vinegar. Okay. And then you can flavor it however you like, but here, how we do it while we're here. Sorry, I keep reaching across you. This is a good skill for people to learn, though, this basic uh, pickling, right? Well, because right? you can do so many different things. Yes. This, we're pickling beets and shallots for this recipe, but you can make your own dill pickles. Sure. You can make, and you know, you can change the flavorings as well. So if you want it, you like spicy, you can mm -hmm. add uh, dried chilies. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make it uh, sort of Asian flavor by adding uh, lemongrass stems and ginger. Yeah, so and that's it, just kind of the foundation. It's and a you very can build basic, basic uh, pickle, and, and we just for this recipe we leave it basic. So, because yeah. okay. um, we just want the, the beets and shallots to, to come through. Mm -hmm. So we have salt. This is about uh, let's say maybe a cup of salt. Mm -hmm. And that's then, the one thing people forget when uh, when things are pickled. There is a lot of salt involved, right? There is. Yeah, yeah. and and again you can. You can adjust it if, sure. you're, if you're on a low sodium diet or something like right. that. Then right. you can always, uh, I wouldn't say leave the salt out, but no, reduce the salt. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is about a cup of sugar. <laughs> and again, if you like more of a, a tart pickle or acidic pickle, you can reduce the sugar, sugar or anything else like that. And okay. then our our, uh, our uh, seasonings are going to be a bay leaf, and this is just a mixture of uh, peppercorns, mm -hmm. uh, mustard seed, and coriander seed. Beautiful. Mm, nice flavor. Uh, so that's the basically what we'll do is we'll bring that up to the boil and then uh, shut it off, let it cool, let it steep for a little bit, and then we'll go on with our pickle. So first, what we do for this recipe is we start with our beets. So these are just regular um, red beetroot. Mm -hmm. We've boiled, peeled the skin off, and then for the for this dish at the restaurant, we just slice them on the mandolin. You just get nice, consistent slices. And they slice so nicely once you've they done the process nicely, of boiling And you get a nice life. sort of even slice. Yes. So they're not sort of lopsided and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we have ring cutters. We have all sorts of different sizes. And then we just punch them out with a ring cutter. And you just get a nice... Oh, look at that. See, for that's the, restaurant, the difference. You, you guys know, make things look so At pretty, home, right? you don't have to do it. You can leave no, them sure. like that, a little bit more rustic, a little bit quicker for people to do, right? right? Exactly. You don't have to mess around with it. But <laughs> the restaurant, we try to make <laughs> stuff so pretty. So we'll take... <laughs> All those, we'll punch them out, mm -hmm. we'll take our pickling liquid, and the first step is to pour the pickling liquid over those beets, mm -hmm. and that color will slowly start to, you can, I don't know if yeah, you can, you can see it on the camera, but you can, it'll start to bleed out, right and as away. it bleeds out, we'll mm -hmm. leave that for about a day, we'll leave it overnight in the fridge, Okay. and when so they come real out, strong color. they'll be this color, that. and there are, oh. I don't know if I have a, you can see, but there are, look at that, see, I got there. You get the color, and there are beets in there. There's, there you and go. And then There's from there, <laughs> we'll take that liquid because mm -hmm. we want we want to color the shallots as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll take this liquid and we'll cut our shallot rings. Mm -hmm. And these are just uh, French shallots. They're also called, called uh, torpedo shallots or mm -hmm. chicken-like shallots. Okay. And we'll just cut slices. We'll do this with a knife just because you get a little bit cleaner slice. So we we'll just cut rings out of those out of the way. And it's amazing how it, it's, it creates like such a dye from, from these, exactly, right? The color yeah. is intense. And so it really it's... helps. It really gives it a lot of pop on the plate and mm -hmm. that visual sort of pre uh, presentation that we look for at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So those shallot rings, and we'll steal this pickling liquid from the beets, mm -hmm. and we'll leave those again overnight. Mm -hmm. And then you can um, 
and then after they've been sitting overnight, mm -hmm. then you can see that the shallots get They're a nice, beautiful red color as well, yeah, right? Absolutely. All right, so I'm just going to move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay. So going over. And then the other components of the dish, get this cleaned up, are uh, cream cheese, yep. which we have uh, smoked. Mm -hmm. So basically, we cut up the cream cheese into chunks, mm -hmm. we put in the same smoke. We have a sort of commercial. Uh, smoker mm -hmm. and then we smoke it for about 45 minutes. It just picks wow. up a little of that smoky flavor oh, and kind of that. helps to reinforce the um, the smokiness yeah, sort of, of, the, the, of, mm -hmm. the, of mm -hmm. the salmon. And then we're going to julienne some apple. So again, with the mandolin, just clean it up a little bit. And we'll take slices of apple. And we get rid of those. We, we feed those to the cooks or <laughs> Just because uh, you don't get the quite the nice <laughs> exactly. shape that we want, and just kind of not too fine, mm -hmm. a little bit thicker, so you get some of that crunchy texture. Because the, the shallots will retain some of their uh, texture as well. Right, and that's when you, when you are composing a dish, you are thinking about that, right? It's obviously Absolutely, a visual yeah. thing, but again, you it's want also a texture. Mix of soft, crunchy, sure. and, and people really do sort of like appreciate that sometimes they exactly. don't realize, they don't it, realize until what it's it missing, is right? but once they get it yes. and there's a good balance and then it goes with the flavorings as well mm -hmm. the nice balance between uh, you know a little bit salty with the salmon yep. and the, the creaminess with the cream cheese and you get the acid from the beets and the mm -hmm. pickles and a little bit of sweetness with everything mm -hmm. it all just really works well together so we'll just dump those in there and then a good trick if you're having a dinner party and you don't want to be doing this at the last minute you want to enjoy your guests mm -hmm. just take your apple and just a little bit of uh, oops. Oh, right, so that a little it bit of lemon uh, juice, doesn't brown. and that'll ha uh, help stop it from from oxidizing, awesome. going brown. Okay. It keeps Very the good. appearance a little bit nicer. Okay. So we are just coming up to go to break, mm -hmm. and uh, what we'll do is we will compile all this during break, and uh, we'll kind of present it out as you would present it to make sure. it look extra pretty. It gives us really good tips on how we can do that at home as well. Definitely. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you. When I dream, I dream in color. When I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We are with Chef Fraser McFarland today and at Quatrefoil, of course, in Dundas, this lovely restaurant. And we're finishing up our dish, so you're going to put together all these lovely flavor components that we just uh, created in the first segment. Yeah. And uh, make our dish look pretty. Okay, let's right? go. Okay. Uh, first thing we do is the uh, smoked salmon on the plate. So mm -hmm. depending on the size, we'll give between four and five. These are not huge pieces, so we'll give five for this one. So this is a dish that someone can come in uh, and try any time at this point, this right? This is on the menu right now, and it's awesome. actually on a, we're doing a, a prefix menu at lunch and dinner, Tuesday to Friday. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 30 courses, or sorry, $30 for lunch mm -hmm. and $50 uh, for dinner, and this is one of the dishes you can have that's awesome. on there. It's also on the regular menu if you don't want to have prefix. So we're just going to do this, the uh, smoked cream cheese, just a few little random dots. I like that. And it's, uh, it's very, your presentation is always very great as well. And again, people do, they start with their eyes, right? Exactly, so they yeah. want to see something I mean, the pretty. first thing is the taste, obviously. You want to make sure everything's delicious. But of course. if you can make it look good too, it always yeah, helps. Exactly. So there are the pickled beets that we did earlier, mm -hmm. pickled shallots. Yeah, this, you kind of and you just guys have been voted one of the it. top restaurants in Canada. We were, that, good when for we you. first opened, we got uh, top you. 10 best new restaurants in Canada, which was a Yeah. Now, a how great, long have you guys been here now? This will be uh, four years in May. Awesome. Yeah, so Congratulations. we've been here for a little, it's great. It's, a little it's a while. It's a lot of work, now. isn't it? A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. It's a lot of work now, but I got... You're, uh, you're the owner too, right? I'm so. the owner too with my wife, and we got, uh, mm -hmm. we got a good staff now that are helping us, and we got that's a good. few more staff than we uh, originally had when we started, yeah, so... Yeah, that's good. You're I'm just going to make a quick little vinaigrette okay. too you if I have 20 seconds or you so. You do have, you have exactly 20 seconds. Okay, here you go. So that's just olive oil and a little bit of the beet juice, and you just make little puddles of it. It looks nice on the plate. Lovely. Just kind of sits in there. Beautiful. And then we're going to finish it with some uh, little uh, beet shoots, little okay. baby beet crust. And we're just going to sprinkle that over the top. Not too much so you can still see what's going on. Gorgeous. 
And then we serve that with a little uh, rice and dill cracker we make out of pureed rice How and wonderful. dill. And that's, Very nice. Look that's at that. How gorgeous is that? Thank you for allowing us into your kitchen Thanks and continued best success to you here Thank you. in Dundas. Our pleasure. The best. All right. That's it for Tara at home. You have yourself a great weekend.